already on it. Endless, desolate. Nothing. Shows how close we were as siblings. That's got nothing to do with my brother. It's on. What should I search for? Searched. Nothing. An archive of my published articles. The ones rescued from the censors, anyway. I mainly covered technology. His name never came up. This lot holds my official documents. Houses change, the paperwork remains. Our Guardian's death certificate is in there. Mentions an address where Leo lived at the time. Leo Dormer, residing at 17 Taibao Street. A good start. But I have no idea where that is. a map of the city. There. 17 Taibao Street. It's in the new territories. Barking dogs, broken bottles, that kind of neighborhood. Didn't expect any better from Leo. I yank on the chain. Won't budge. I wonder if I can locate a key somehow. I press the button. A crackle. 
smoker's voice on the other end. Angry old man. He sounds divided. Shout at a stranger to scram. All good excuse for a rant. I switch on the reporter charm. Ranting it is then. I explain that my brother used to live at number 17. The name rings a bell. They didn't interact much, but had been on good terms. Leo helped the old man carry a bed frame upstairs when he moved in. Solid wood, too. He also recalls a gathering to celebrate Leo's university enrollment. Is he certain? About the university part? Yes, he says. A local university, although he can't remember which. Leo moved out soon after and was never seen again. But he was very proud of that, becoming a student so late in his life. Does he remember the university name? UMC or GMU, he says, something with three letters. He apologizes. His memory isn't what it used to be. I thank him anyway. So what happened next door? He sighs. A few years ago, the landlords hired a company to renovate it. They never completed the job, and the place was left to rot. Is that why it's boarded up? No, he says. The orphans are to blame. They set up camp next door. They rummage through bins. Break into empty properties. Even try to sell him his own rubbish after he throws it out. Scavengers, he calls them. No good scavengers. Could they be selling items found at number 17? Of course, he says. They'd sell you their own mothers if they could. Not that they have any, I say. No response. The landlords. He's never met them, but wouldn't mind a word or two about the mess. What can you tell me about the renovating company? Wouldn't hire them myself, he says. What did they find in the house? He recommends I ask the orphans directly. How can I access the house next door? He has no idea. I thank him for his time. Be careful out there, he says. Here inside. Empty. I venture a few questions. Conversation proves difficult. I'm not sure we speak the same language. Or maybe he has no interest in talking to me. Number 17. What does he know about it? He doesn't seem to know. I take great care to ensure he gets the point. Number 17. You. Find. Me. Buying. A light is switched on. He reaches into his bag, revealing worthless junk. A bundle of pens, elastic bound, rusty motherboard, ancient photo frame, chipped wood, slim pickings. I toss him a coin for his trouble. Does he know how to enter the house next door? A key, maybe. I don't think he gets the question. I think he's done. 
He just waves at the objects on the ground. Got to admire the salesmanship. A bundle of branded pens. Says ULS on them. Definitely bricked. It's made of wood. Chipped varnish. Nothing unusual. Why? No need. It says ULS on them. The old man mentioned a three-letter university name. Long shot, but worth investigating. Unlabeled. I bet it's high percentage stuff. I can talk into it. Need to ring it first. No names on it. It's to call number 19. Maybe a few more questions. The old man picks up. Got nothing better to do, he says. I mentioned the initials. Do they sound familiar at all? ULS, he says. That's the University of Life Sciences. I vaguely remember reading about it. Some riots halted construction a few years back. The building now appears simultaneously demolished and incomplete. They're looking at me. I don't get it. They're looking at me. No idea what it says.
eyes closed. She knows I'm staring. It doesn't stop her from dancing. I command her attention. Hard to keep it for long. Music's blaring. She slurs her words, won't stop moving. From what I gather, she's been dancing for 56 hours straight. All of them have. It's her event, she explains. Insomnia, a monthly gathering. Like-minded folks testing the limits of sleep deprivation. No stimulants, she says, just music and light. Kids these days. Anyway, time for questions. That name, she's never heard it before. Why did she choose the university? I thought it was a church, she says. She doesn't need to be asked about that. printed note. Statue project led by Dorma. Proposals by Friday. Led by a certain Dorma. This has to be a coincidence. Or is it? I wonder what the statue project is. of a statue, some kind of insect playing the harp. Someone annotated it with a red pen, suggesting the design was approved. The same person also penned a playful acrostic. B is for brilliant. I is for intellectuals. O is for of. E is for exponential. T is for ta. There used to be more, but the ink has bled. It must be one of the proposed designs. Was my brother the Dormer in charge of the project? Did he approve it? The symbolism might be significant. The acrostic could also be a clue. of the same memo. One more faded than the other. Terminal blacklist, students protest. Anderson A, Ange L, Betty G, Chopra D, Chun L, Dama W, Do L, D. The rest is illegible. Not his full name, but some initials match. Can't track down all the students, but I should investigate the protest. A small 
small-scale version of the university includes a statue of a torch-wielding man. There's a quote on the miniature plaque, so that society may gain wisdom as fast as science gathers knowledge. Yes, albeit ten times smaller. Structural, synthetic, and systems biology. All topics found in the ST sections. The C to D section. Books on cell and developmental biology. Looks like the bookcases are not in alphabetical order. Animal rights. 
Rights, Biology, and a large section on Bioethics. of bioethics, but there is an address for the ethics of biology department. 341 Belvedere Heights. I expect it might lead me to a colleague or fellow professor, but this is Leo's home.
try knocking. No answer. The panel will open it. It reads, now death threats, wiping footprint. Uncle L in panic room, signed M. If Uncle L is Leo, we have a relative of some kind. The death threats. Who hasn't received one or two? But I am curious. seems to match, but that doesn't help me much. Successfully deleted. 
some files could not be deleted. I assume it's his files that were wiped. or clouds. End of life technology. I thought it was illegal.
the panel will open it. Thick door. No point shouting. The panel will open it. Marble musical instrument. Looks antique. Two series of numbers are engraved. 6998 and 4543.
bright eyed optimist to cynic. Can't fault him for it, really.
Looks like he's been baking in the sun for a while. I point at the sign. Is this the stop for Phoenix Springs? Is that such a crime, he asks. To change my mind, I don't know what to say to that.
It's gravity. It pulls me. Imposing unusual ring pattern. Imposing unusual ring pattern. Rebellious streak in her. She should be chewing gum. What are you? She asks. I tell her I'm a reporter. A dog chasing her tail, she says. What's a reporter without news? I'm not sure. We shouldn't talk anymore, she says. One of many confusing conversations here. My interlocutor can volunteer information. My information doesn't quite reach them. Why? Freshly made, drying in the breeze. Freshly made, sun dried. Tracing symbols, the focus of a scholar whose eyes were trained on fine print. Jet black, ground, charred tree bark. Her work, I can't tell if it's an alphabet. Mathematics? It's... no, it's bigger than that, she stammers. What can she tell me about Phoenix Springs? She launches into and aborts multiple metaphors. It's hard to follow. Something about the taxonomy of chemicals. I realize she's talking about the name, not the place. I mention Leo. She exhales. History, she begins. The thing with people. The complexity of the answer overwhelms her, like she's failing to be exact with her wording. Wrestling with ungraspable concepts. Still, no clues about my brother. I ask if the name sounds familiar. I can see I'm confusing her. Seems genuinely puzzled for a beat. Undecipherable. Strange scribbles. Full of water, floating fibers. It's to pound vegetation into pulp. To solve what problem? That won't help.
vacant stare, just sitting there. Does he live here? No, he says. I'm trying to escape. I tell him the door isn't locked. That's why my plan will work, he says. My plan is patience. Right. Can I ask him questions? Wait long enough, he says, and the answers come to you. He doesn't speak again. Potpourri of dehydrated petals, fruit, bark. The smell is somewhat domestic. Like scented candles or a relative's washing powder. One eye closed for perspective, gauging a big scale with big hands. I clear my throat. I will answer, he says, as if handing out gold. What does he do here? Nature takes substance and makes a horse, he explains. Melts it down for a tree or a person. I am nature, he says. Carbon dated to eons. I ask about my brother. Sculptors must see from all sides, he says. Like time, we remove more than we add. Very close to talking about himself in the third person. Heard the name before. Prompts him to gush about himself. His art, his process. Says he birthed every rock here. The dust calls him by name. That will do. The work, he says, will be unrivaled. An art form that doesn't have a name yet. Good luck to him. Carved stone slabs. Towering painted figures. Carved stone slabs. Towering painted figures. Calm, calming. Sturdy, ancient structure. The wooden guardrails have a glossy sheen, polished by a thousand palms. Picture of health. Lean limbs, clear skin. I'm stretching, he says. So I see. The secret is to extend past your standard range of motion. There is a binary between mind and body, chaos and cosmos, other and self, imaginary and real, matter and form, sacred and profane. He goes on. The man can talk. But not listen, apparently. The reporter's hunch. Some of these folks aren't worth my time. Deep in thoughts, unclothed. Two fingers on his left wrist. He's monitoring his pulse.
Health concerns. He presents his artery as evidence. I anticipate an anomaly in the data, he says. Stiffness in the hinges. Fever to cook the mind. This heart never stutters. He sounds almost let down. The only unknown, he says, is your influence. Maybe I shouldn't be here. Correct, he says. None of us should be here. What are you? She asks. Still a reporter. You're right, she says. People don't change. Not sure I agree. Look who's talking, she says. Not bathing as much as caressing the surface. How's the water? If you float long enough, she says, the body mistakes gravity for motion. Sounds risky. To incubate means to lie down, she says. You should try it. flour and greyish paste. Both rock hard and breaking down. This one's for baking, full of ashes and charred crust. Miniature versions of the cabin I'm standing in. They're identical, even in their defects. Grotesque carvings. Distorted features. Wooden. Rustic. Red-eyed, hands and face blackened by coal or ash. Is she okay? Can I help? I'm sorry, she says, like a child who disappointed her parents. What for? I don't remember, she sobs. Is she safe here? Anyone to speak to? She shrugs. I have no idea. Someone around here asked about Leo Dorma. Does she know him? It's possible, she says without much conviction. I don't feel great about pressing her, but this is crucial. It backfires. She breaks down. I'm going under soon, she says, and I can't remember my own name. I can't remember my craft. I can't even remember what I look like anymore. She's the best lead I have so far. I must jolt her memory. I describe her features. Slender frame, shoulder-length hair. No, she protests. That's all wrong. 
What does she mean by craft? She answers with another question. Why did they have to make the words so ugly, she asks. I'm unsure what she means. They replaced my instructions, so I had to burn them, she explains. That's why I don't remember, she says. I don't remember what I'm supposed to do. Any pointers? Initials? Nothing. Where did she burn them? Why? Why? She asks back. Why did they make the words so ugly? The topic confuses and upsets her. Goes nowhere. Okay, I should take it easy on her. Her reflection in the water. Worth trying. follow me. She hesitates. Yes. I lead her to the water. What she sees in there horrifies her. Relentless and precise. Can't tell if he's fixing or destroying it. I know you, he says. Used to read all your articles. Sounds more like scorn than flattery. Under his breath, he calls me a traitor. Did I hear him right? You either live your culture or destroy it, he says. There is no in-between. Puzzling train of thought. non sequiturs. Irrelevant answers. I notice a pattern. Won't find them there. Catching the light, lizard like. like he's lost his balance. I know that stance. I was a real butcher, he laments. A proper rat, apex creature. He burps and wretches. I'd gut your office, he says. I'd strip the premises. Even sniffed out a font that saved money on ink. Enjoying the fumes a bit too much. Filled with rotting fruit, stacked head high, pyramid-like. That doesn't need to hear my voice.
disheveled, begging for attention. In the city, he'd be feeding pigeons. He inquires first. What happens when you place a mirror in front of another mirror? I don't know. Some kind of infinity. You have two mirrors, he says. The thought tickles him. He giggles. Don't know why I expected wisdom. Maybe it's the tree. She's okay. She shoes me away. You're making me forget the tune, she says. What are you? She asks. What about her? What is she? She scans the trees. Me, I'm secret police. We shouldn't talk anymore, she says. beauties, but the stench, like sour sweat. Bright red, but with a green smell. Herbaceous, mint or dill. Striking black petals. Their perfume has a moldy tinge, but not unpleasant. Reminds me of the earth after the rain. Plain roses with a woody smell, like a mixture of sawdust and tree sap. Pointy, orchid-like. Strong smell I can only describe as medical. Cleaning fluid or disinfectant. Poppy-shaped, yellow. Rancid smell, like a smoker's lips or fingertips. eccentric posture, stroking petals as if coaxing an alley cat. Her patience only extends to the flowers. She shushes me with full force. They won't blossom before the moon, she says. He asks, why is it so hard to get a straight answer these days? It's all disjointed here. I tell him I've just arrived. I can't trust anyone, he says, moping. Those trees by the river, they weren't there yesterday. Another sock puppet spewing out nonsense. Makes the place what it is. Thought they were apples at first, but there's a smoky, acrid fragrance like an old train station or forest fire. Head-sized, tough, shelled fruit. The ripest one smell zesty and sweet. More a bush than a tree. Its berries have a briny, fishy aroma. Some kind of plums. The emanating smell is rich, wholesome, like toasted grain. The grass is disgusting, he says. I'll have the servants remove it. I used to tell my sister to tuck the cables under the desk. Keep the ugly buried. All that plumbing, all that machinery. Could be, but I need proof.
go. She needs help remembering things. I'm trying to, she says, pointing at her work. Where could I find written instructions? Her ears prick up at the mention. If you do find them, bring them over, she says. I must check all writing for consistency. I want to sympathize or at least understand, but I fail to see how she's helping. Language is a material, she says. Yet we build with clay that's as brittle as boiled bones, pinches the bridge of her nose in frustration. Or is it bird bones? She's lost me. It's hard to convey, she admits. She claims she's helping. I don't understand how, and I'm not convinced. Fresh ashes. I run my hand through paper thin cinders. There is also paper in there. Erdnack. Step one, illegible. But that must be the instructions. I mentioned the word. Erdnack, she repeats, relishing the clacking consonant. Erd, she explains, was meant to sound harsh. In that context, it meant cooked or baked. Nuck, she continues, was a shape. Rectangular, to be precise. So, a baked rectangle? That would make sense, she smiles. This one's for baking, full of ashes and charred crust. This one's for baking, full of ashes and charred crust. But what is the rectangle? Bread would be baked and rectangular. what the girl makes of it. Would be right for baking, but it's empty except for crumbled bricks. Although, rectangular, baked. Is that what I'm after? Bricks. I should check with the girl.
couldn't outlast the elements. She mentioned building bridges, but I don't know how it could help. my findings. An Erdnack is a baked rectangle. Oh, she says. But what is that? Good question. Does she know how to bake bricks? 77% mud, she recites. 19 sand. 4% straw. A glint of recognition. Gratitude even. I bake bricks, she affirms. I build bridges that break. Mason is the name I was given here. That is my craft. She's beginning to remember. Standing there makes me uneasy. I approach with caution. She senses my presence. I was promised so much, she says, but it doesn't print. What else does she know about herself? 77% mud, she recites. 19 sand, 4% straw, broken record. Fresh ashes. Why burn the instructions here? I doubt she even knows. Doesn't strike me as rational. Thinking. Not as unconscious as I thought. If you float long enough, she says, the body mistakes gravity for motion. I've heard it before. She asks. I play along. Why is the secret police here then? My superior was so boastful, she says, bragging about her 50 years of experience. With all due respect, I told her. Sounds to me like you've had one year of experience 50 times. I bet she didn't like that. We shouldn't talk anymore, she says. That doesn't need to hear my voice. A headless builder brandishing a trowel. The plinth has been defaced. What remains are three letters. S-O-N.
doesn't feel like her, and yet the letters match her name. The trial makes sense. Is that the same person? Let's see if it awakens anything in the girl. Sanitary clothing, surgical mask, skull cap. The eyes are remarkably lifelike. Another vandalized inscription. I can make out the last three letters. E O N. Muscular kneeling man. Untitled artwork. I recognize a vial. The rest fell apart. More tree than man. Nothing weighs on his mind. I talk and he appears to listen. Never utters a sound, but my words do get through to him. What does he make of this place? His fingers dip in the sand. Elegant, clean strokes. Five concentric circles. I know he can speak, he simply chooses not to. More tree than man. Nothing weighs on his mind. Does he recognize the name Leo Dorma? He wipes his art clean and no sketch. Is that my photograph? Did they meet? How does he know about the photograph? He points at the sand. I'm so close, yet so far. I'm positive that's a young version of him. Wrong person. Does he know her? He shrugs. Who knows or even cares? I thought of these people as neighbours. They are isolated planets whose paths don't overlap. I mention her. A new sketch. Childish scribbles. Is he mocking me? No, he seems dead serious about it. Does he know what the statue used to look like? He answers with a portrait. Is that the same person? Now his finger rises towards a white moon. The light changes. One of those night skies more solid than the earth itself. He's done here.
never get to show her the portrait. The ritual begins. A mechanical march. I know exactly where it leads.
the heart of the desert. It's gravity. It pulls me. I'm stretching, he says. So I see, wake up and think, empty myself, do my sums, eat. So you see, it's mind, body, mind, body, like alternating current. Some say it's one, but the binaries won't meet. He goes on, the man can talk, but not listen, apparently. Someone gather the ripest ones. Topless and perched, she's pruning. I notice some of the harvest is rotting. Human hubris, she says. That's what fruit is designed to do. Does she know my brother? I was taught some grass is bad, she says, and some is beautiful. It seemed so arbitrary. All plants are miracles to me. She pauses, pinches and plucks a leaf. Grass becomes a weed, she says, when it takes more than it gives. It sounds vaguely threatening. Any thoughts about the place? I planted every blade of grass here, she says, and it still confuses me. I would need a good reason. Pointy, orchid-like. Strong smell I can only describe as medical. I've heard it helps them grow. I hid a tracker on my lover, he says, to follow her path on the map. It was pathetic. Not so much the sleeping around, but the tiny circles traced in town. Drool runs down his chin. He's beaming. I ignore him. White fingerprints stained the glass panel, medium-sized hands, flower. No gaps, buttons or switches. It must lead underground. But how? He considers each part on the shelf, hesitates, repeats, rise, 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 I think I hear him mumble. Let me guess, he's the baker, that's not a guess, he says, the bread won't shape itself, can't argue with that. 
I ask about my brother. His eyes roll at the mention. Wherever I stand, he says, no matter what I do. There's forever a curious one asking about a lost one. I press him. I've come to accept, he says, that it might be better to forget. I ask how long he's been there. Is that such a crime, he asks. To change my mind? Not to my knowledge. I picture it so clearly, he says, the path to the sea. From A to B to C, at every turn, against my will, I can't help but curve left. I noticed flower on the lift. He whispers, is that where I left my memory? I think he let it slip. An admission he's been under. I offer to fetch his memory for him. But what is it? No point, he says, if I don't even remember what it is. I ask questions, casting a wide net. I've come to accept, he says, that it might be better to forget. He's reluctant to remember. I must jolt his memory. Forgetfulness. Repetition. Complex internal logic that solves very little. It's frustrating, but I feel compelled to help him. first. How do you access what's left below? This I would like to know. Submit yourself to the Silent One, he says. I've seen the past with my own eyes. Is that a clue? Legged, entranced. Cables dance above her head. She bows. Any requests? I have questions. A question is a request, she says. Who is it? The one thing I can't summon is silence, she says. It's not what I meant. Either way, it doesn't help. I mention him. She summons a melody. It's unstructured, as if scrolling through radio stations. I can't locate him, she confesses. Does the place inspire her? It sounds like a bomb or eruption. Then liquid. I don't know how else to describe it. Anything about the depths? The sound takes a somber turn. I don't have a theme, she admits. Either way, that won't open the lift. How do I help Baker remember something? A cluster of notes becomes a phrase. A ballad. Is this Baker's? I seem to recall, she nods. She's already recalling his ballad. She thanks me. What for? It 
it's a privilege, she says, to spend time in there. Does she mean the music? Helmet. Head. She tears pieces of paper off, chews them, spits and pounds them. She signals that her mouth is full. Is he okay? I'm finished, he sobs. I'm no king. Everything I touch turns to feces. I let him wallow in his misery. The musician played me a melody. Might help Baker with his memory. I hum it to myself. Baker's little tune. I remember how it goes now. I hum the song once more. I can't forget it now. His melody. I hear it. I hum it. We used to play it on the beach, he says. That's the memory I've left below. Peculiar creature. But I think he knows the way down. he remember now I remember now he says unnumbered sub levels I notice leaks unplugged cables this is legacy technology layers built upon layers automation without aim fidgets gets on my nerves. Can you smell it, he asks. It reeks of the end. Haunted plant.
planted on the spot, scanning the photograph he picked up from the ground. Is that his memory? A photograph? I shouldn't be here, he panics. Why would Mason choose this? I'm leaving for the sea. Off he goes again, forever indecisive, bouncing between locations. But the name, Mason, dormant inside of me. I've heard it before, a connection to Leo. fragmented at first. Thoughts congeal. I see it. A faint trace of personhood. We focus on our location. It triggers a strong response. I catch a flurry of linked ideas. A work site. A flood. An architect. The sequence ends abruptly, as if halted. Two souls crammed into one skull. It's indecent. screams for me to crash against it.
a memory of Mason. I think I catch a glimpse. It's too zoomed in. I can't sense the perspective or geometry. I focus. It's like another memory traps the light. Too much gravity and mass. I visualize a work site. The thought pierces through unearthed buried sediments accreted over time. It calls for a name, but whose? We see it now. It's too much. The vision trips something. But I extracted it. the location clearly always triggers the same ideas a work site a flood an architect who is the architect Hard to determine. I feel like we both know. I sense great tenderness. The vision ends. The accident. Shouldn't be survived. Life hangs by a thread. And yet the thread is respun. It is rebirth. All these people around Mason. Our lives become entangled. That's why I'm in the room. Covering it for the newspaper.
quite come to yet. I might have gone too far. The images aren't clear, as if their memory somewhere, not willing to be born yet. Mason. I see it, a faint trace of personhood. Let's remember the oasis. We see the location clearly always triggers the same ideas. A work site. A flood. An architect. Who is the architect? I sense great tenderness. The vision ends. The accident. The memory is painful. The procedure. Our lives become entangled. That's why I'm in the room, covering it for the newspaper. A strange mirror. Memories of me that aren't my own. Is that all they see? Is that all I am? I remember now, something happens to me here. I become broken. An engine that only produces one question. But it is me. The reason his name lives on, I ask about Leo, and does he? I may not see the full picture. But I know exactly where to find it. It beckons. How long have we been doing this? Years, decades, millennia.
got what they wanted. He's focusing on the signal. Does he have a minute? Distress call. Sometimes revealed, sometimes hidden. 